the collection of blood samples will be done on nearly every patient that enters the hospital. It is a task that can be completed by a phlebotomist, an RN, or a PCT. There are a few ways that blood can be collected, but one of the most common methods is through the use of a butterfly needle. This video will explain and demonstrate the process of collecting blood samples using a butterfly needle. Before you begin, you'll need to gather some supplies from the pod room. You will need a tourniquet, a butterfly needle, a vacutainer adapter, the vacutainer tubes needed for the required labs, clean gloves, 2x2 two two gauze, tape, and a chlorohexidine applicator, or if that's not available, an alcohol prep wipe. Before poking a patient, it's best to understand the supplies that you'll be using. First, we'll look at the butterfly needle. At one end is a needle protected in a plastic sheath and attached to some tubing, and at the other end of that length of tubing is a gray rubber nub. That gray rubber conceals and protects a needle. Be aware of this, and be careful not to accidentally poke yourself. On the opposite end of the tubing is the butterfly needle itself. The needle is attached to a yellow hub, and there are two wings extending from either side of that hub. The gauge of the needle is printed on the top of the wings. The bottom of the wings is textured. The needle is protected by a plastic sheath. When removed, it will reveal the needle. The needle itself is hollow and beveled. Whenever accessing a patient's vein, the needle must be bevel up, which means the opening is on the top and the point is on the bottom of the needle. This is easily achieved by looking at the wings. The textured side should always be on the bottom and the print on the top. When you access the patient, you will fold the wings up and pinch them together to hold and control the needle. You will be grasping the textured side. The textured plastic ensures good grip and control of the needle. The butterfly needle also has a safety lock feature to protect from accidental needle sticks. To engage the lock, secure the yellow hub with one hand. With the other hand, gently pull back on the wing. The yellow hub will slide over the needle, and when it is fully retracted, a lock will engage and the needle will be permanently protected within the hub. Always utilize this feature after removing the needle from a patient. There is also a version of the butterfly needle with button-activated needle retraction. It is not currently stocked at Trinity Health Livonia, but if you do see this needle, the safety lock is activated in the same way as the AutoGuard IV needle seen here. Simply push the button on the top of the hub, and the needle will be pulled into the handle instantly. The vacutainer adapter and vacutainer tubes are used along with the butterfly. To make this possible, attach the vacutainer adapter to the end of the tubing by screwing it on. Now vacutainer tubes can be placed in the adapter and pushed onto the needle to activate the vacuum within in order to fill the tubes with blood. All vacutainers are negatively pressurized to fill with the desired amount of blood. This means that each tube contains a vacuum. And when a needle pierces the cap of the tube, it will pull whatever is on the other end of that needle to fill that vacuum. When the butterfly needle is in a vein, the thing on the other side of that needle is the blood for our sample, and it will fill the empty tube. Each vacutainer contains a specific preservative that is designed to help identify a particular aspect of blood. Therefore, each type of lab will require a specific tube. Tube caps are color-coded to help identify the correct vacutainer. Identify and collect the appropriate tube colors for the labs you need to draw. When drawing multiple tubes, they will need to be drawn in a very particular order to prevent the mixing of certain preservatives into other tubes. The order of draw can be referenced through the policy manager, and there are also badge cards that list the correct order. Before poking the patient, organize the lab tubes in their correct order of draw to make collection easier and to eliminate the risk of cross-contamination of these preservatives. If you have this selection of tubes, you should arrange them in their proper order of draw, which would be red, yellow, orange, pink, and purple. With your supplies collected, you will need to locate an appropriate site to access, and there are some things that should always be considered before choosing an access site. If there is an infusion running, locate a site on the opposite arm if at all possible. This will eliminate the risk of the infusion fluid impacting the lab results. If it is not possible to use the opposite arm, you must choose a site distal to the infusion site in order to minimize this risk. If the patient has had lymphedema in the past or breast surgery with lymph node removal, do not draw labs from that arm. If the patient is a dialysis patient with an AV fistula, no lab draws can be done on the arm with the fistula. If the patient is a renal patient in any respect, even if they aren't currently requiring dialysis, draw blood distal to the AC. Try to limit pokes to the hands so that the veins needed for any future dialysis access will not be damaged. With a general idea of where you want to look for a vein, place the tourniquet about two inches above the desired site. Tourniquet should only be on for a minute at a time at most. If you cannot locate a vein in one minute, 
remove the tourniquet and reapply in a new location to look again. When you've located a vein, make note of the location, then remove the tourniquet and set up your supplies. Clean the site with a chlorohexidine applicator, scrubbing back and forth for at least 30 seconds. Chlorohexidine can disinfect one square inch for every milliliter in the applicator. A 1.5 milliliter applicator, as seen here, can only clean 1.5 square inches, so only scrub over the desired access site. Then allow the site to dry completely before poking. Do not blow on or wave your hand over the site to try to dry it more quickly as this will potentially contaminate the site. Just allow it to dry naturally. Once disinfected, do not touch the site again. That will contaminate your site and you will need to clean it again. Reapply the tourniquet. Grasp the butterfly by folding the wings together. You should be holding the textured side of the wings, and if you are, the needle will be in the desired bevel up orientation. With your other hand, you can anchor the vessel by pulling the skin down below the site, but be careful not to touch the area that you just disinfected. Always insert the needle pointing up the arm, toward the heart. Never insert pointing down toward the hand. Angle the needle about 30 degrees to the patient's skin. Line up the needle with the vein and insert the needle until you see blood enter the tubing. This is referred to as the flash. The flash is visible through the yellow hub, and when you see the flash, it means that you have pierced the vessel. Decrease the angle slightly and advance the needle another millimeter or two to ensure that you are completely within the vessel, but you do not need to advance the entire needle into the patient. You only need the beveled end to be completely within the vessel in order to draw the blood. And if you advance too far, you will likely poke through the opposite side of the vessel and the vein will be blown. Once in place, use one hand to secure the position of the butterfly needle in the patient. With your other hand, insert the first tube into the vacutainer adapter and push it down onto the needle. If the butterfly is still in the vein, blood will immediately begin to fill the tube. Release the tourniquet from the patient's arm at this time. Allow the tube to fill completely. They are pressurized to pull the appropriate amount of blood, and when they are full, they will stop filling. So when the tube is finished filling, remove it and insert the next tube. But continue to stabilize the butterfly with your other hand. Removal and insertion of tubes can be done smoothly with one hand with a little bit of practice, but if you let go of the butterfly to use your other hand, the needle may become dislodged, and you will need to poke the patient again to finish your collection. When all tubes have been filled, it is time to remove the needle. After removing the final tube from the adapter end of the butterfly, gently pull back on the needle until it has exited the patient's skin. Then immediately engage the safety lock by sliding the yellow hub over the needle. Hold 2x2 two two gauze over the site with steady pressure to minimize any hematoma formation, and then fold some 2x2s two and tape them over the site to create a pressure dressing. Dispose of the butterfly needle in the sharps container. Next, return to your tubes. Invert each tube multiple times to fully mix the preservative with the blood sample. Do not shake the tubes, just invert them back and forth smoothly. Label the sample tubes while still in the presence of the patient. Blood samples should never leave the room until they are appropriately labeled. Document the sample collection in EPIC and send them down to lab. The collection of blood samples is a task that can be completed by a phlebotomist, RN, or PCT. When performing a blood sample collection, it is important to follow the appropriate steps to ensure the safety of the patient and the quality of the sample. Accessing a vein with any type of needle is a skill that requires practice, so don't be discouraged by failed attempts but learn from them and hone your technique so that you can master it more quickly. It will save you time and your patients will appreciate your dedication.